Hi, going, buddy. Baby. How we doing, brother? Missed you. <laughs> this is the only time we get to hang out, so I'm excited. So me and Jan, <laughs> just to pave the way, me and Jan have uh, been in the same city for two years now, and uh, we haven't <laughs> seen each other once. Um, that only is because on someone you. else came in town. What? Uh, Kluber came in town, and we had a, a, a somewhat breakfast brunch date. Oh, that's right. We did see each other once. Yeah, barely. Okay, barely. good, good. I feel better about our relationship now. <laughs> um, I Kratz is right. He pointed at me for the blame, and I will take blame. Um, so I am sorry, Jan. Host him at the restaurant. What? He doesn't oh, mean it. He doesn't mean it. It's okay. I don't mean it, but he. Yeah, the good news. The good okay. news is somebody's option was picked up, and we get another year to try. <laughs> it's not gonna happen, but it's okay. It's okay. We'll be in the, We'll be in the same city. Um, but yeah, to to your point, I'm excited. Uh, glad to be a Cubby again. Congratulations! Congratulations! Well mm -hmm. deserved. Um, from everything I'm hearing and seeing, is they they got the same player mm -hmm. I got. Um, they got the leader. They got the the guy who shows up every day. So uh, well deserved on the option being picked up. Hey, question too, Jan. How how does that work? Like, take take us through. Is it just a a phone call from the club? Is it from the agency? Like, hey, we got you. And and do they give you any indication beforehand? Sorry, I, I my connection was kind of lost. I'm back. Sorry. Uh oh, I think. No, we, we got you. We hear you. I think we got to refresh. You got to see that beautiful Brazilian face. Yeah, exactly. This is it's it frozen. Right it's actually, you know, most people. Picture you're frozen on. When, it's a good... when we're refreshing, Jan, I will say this. So most people, when, if they have a connection issue for a sec and it gets frozen, Kratz, you can probably speak to this because you're on every day. <laughs> exactly. Of course, Jan's like. Just yeah, Jan just has a perfect, he just has a <laughs> perfect resting face. <laughs> Zoolander will be back with us oh, well. in one moment. There he is. There you right. go. So, all right, you're, Jan, you're back. Yeah, play-by-play -play of how an option works. Like, do you get an indication before? Do you talk to the team like, hey, what are you thinking? And when did you find out the news and how? So to, um, to answer your question, uh, I have that kind of patience. I'm like, hey, guys, like, what's going on? Like, halfway through the year, I'm like, hey, can you just pick it up? Like, let me just be more relaxed towards the end of the year. But obviously, that's not how things go. Um but um, towards the end, uh, there were little conversations um, about the future of the team, and they kept including me in the conversation. So um, I, I kind of had a – that was as, about as much of a hit as I had. Um, but, no, I, I didn't get the call that um, the option was picked up until, you know, I think like one of the last days. And um, obviously plenty of other things have happened since then, so my, uh, my story got pushed to the side a little bit. All right, so let's talk about that other story. Since you're crushing your coffee right now, I kind of <laughs> teased this a little bit yesterday on the show. We were trying to have you on Monday. Let's get this timestamp right. Monday at 1.15. You're right. Yes. And I want to make sure my producer, he knows, this is out to Mark, what time did you find out about the Craig Council coming to Chicago deal? 12.35. Oh, so we could have had breaking news <laughs> on foul territory <laughs> with Jan Gomes' beautiful face. So we would have not only sold the sexy part, but we would have sold breaking news. And I know you would have told us because you would never hold secrets back. I never hold any secrets from Kipnis. So, and obviously I'm <laughs> terrified of you, so I would have done it the same. <laughs> Now, now I can say it, you know, it's, uh, I kept asking Kratzy, Hey man, does somebody better come on or something? And then we talked a little bit about the, the breaking news. So I was like, you're lost brother. Uh, <laughs> All right. So is. give us, give us the details though. Kratz, like, I still want to hear what that was like, what the reaction is, the whole deal. I mean, it's, it's taken over the news cycle and managers don't usually get attention like this. So. I kind of, it's been kind of cool to cover it. It's usually about player transactions, but here we are talking about the biggest pickup so far of the off season. Man, uh, it, <laughs> Go ahead. No, it was a, it was a major shock uh, for sure. Um, no one saw it coming at all, but um, like you said, it was a, a major uh, transaction or however you want to call it. Uh, 
no, we're excited. Uh, definitely didn't like playing against the Brewers for that reason, and it starts from the top. And uh, that was one of the things uh, we've already been talking about it. Um, he um, he changed the culture with the Brewers, and we're excited to have him on our side. You think you guys make the playoffs last year if he's your manager? Oh, I don't. I um, I, I don't think it would have made any difference. To be honest, I think uh, Rossi um, was doing it as much as he could. Uh, he did a tremendous job. And really, um, when you dig yourself a, a, a 10 games back hole, um, and we did a tremendous job digging ourselves out of it, um, it was, a, in a way, newer guys, like younger guys in the bullpen. And we, the best way I could put it, we ran out of gas. That's kind of what it was. Um, we had about half of our bullpen injured. We had some guys trying to make it back. Uh, just didn't work out. Um, it was uh, definitely a... a, a you know, anytime you don't make the playoffs, it's a disappointing time. But uh, especially since that group that we had, we had such a fun group to be around. And um, that was the biggest thing that we talked about was, you know, doing the champagne shower with this group would have been a lot of fun. Jan, did you talk to David Ross since that stuff went down? You know, we're obviously giving praise to Craig and, and he deserves mm -hmm. it. He's been one of the best. But you had David there, fellow catcher. Did you guys have a conversation since? Uh, it was really um, a small one, really just, uh, you know, for me, it was it was a really great honor. It was a, um, I love the way he managed us. I love the way our our, uh, our communication level was. Uh, and as shocked as we were, I'm sure if he wants to, uh, and this is what I told him, I'm sure if he wants to, he's going to bounce back on his feet and be uh, managing or being a big part of some other team. What about the Brewers? I keep pushing this narrative. What if he pops up as the Brewer skipper? Don't you think it'd be fun for the game? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, at, at the point of uh, everything that we are now, it wouldn't be the weirdest thing that's happening. No, you're right. That's true. <laughs> All right, so so one more here. Um, you played with Wilson Contreras, and did you feel like there was any tension between <laughs> him and Ross? Because he publicly went out and said about time and, and yeah. clearly was, was pissed off. Um. I don't know, man. Maybe slippery fingers. I don't know why that, that needs to be done. <laughs> um, I, I don't think anybody gains any tra any good traction. That tra it just becomes a story. I don't know why that happened. Uh, I felt like when you know I was catching with Willie last year or you know two years ago, um, there was a great relationship. I mean, Rossi's an intense guy. Willie's an intense guy, and that's just kind of the way it goes. And for that to to be something that we talk about now, it's kind of unfortunate, but. You know, I respect the heck out of both of them. And, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, just like his, uh, those comments that he made, it gets deleted. <laughs> um, by the way, on Contreras, were you surprised that the Cardinals weren't good this year in general because they've been so good every year? Like, we've asked some, some others in the division. Like, hey, what did you see from St. Louis this year? Not to do with Contreras, obviously. You know, they mm -hmm. had some pitching problems. But were you surprised? Heading into the season, how did you think they were going to be? Um, I mean, definitely, you know, anytime you think of uh, the Cardinals, you think the, the – I mean, every time we played them, they were competitive. So they didn't, you know, step off the gas against us. But, um, you know, anytime I would try to keep up with them, it was closer to when we were playing them. And it seemed like they were playing better. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was a surprise overall to, to see them uh, um, not play as well. I'm laughing right now. I'm looking at the notes that we have on you coming on the show, and I'm seeing a fun fact about you is back at Tennessee where he played at every infield position except shortstop. <laughs> um, and I, I get Why it. You're not, you're not that good of an athlete, so you, don't, you didn't have shortstop in you. But I, mean, I will say this for people to know, Jan would be out with the catchers or first basemen before uh, middle infielders or other infielders would come out. And anytime I saw Jan turning double plays at second base, I had to sprint out there and almost like swat the glove out of his hand. I said, get out of here. You're doing it better than everyone else. You're making everybody look bad. So Jan's hands are some of the best hands, and I hate giving him credit, and I even hate it more doing it to his face. Uh, but that goes to show that a guy can there play in this position. Um, I'm getting, you can sell, Jan. I'm getting softer in my old age, and I'm being nice to you now. <laughs> Um, yes, those are very true comments. Uh, I would, it got to the point that I would just go out there 
as Kipnis was walking out there just to be like, dude, this is not that hard. Can you throw, <laughs> can you turn a double play for us, please? <laughs> I tried. I couldn't. Well, you got to drive in more than you let in. And then you did that. There you go. There you go. Um, it's longer. <laughs> How much What'd longer you, you got, kid? Wow. I mean, hey, you, no warning on these. Uh, I love it. Uh, how much more? I don't know, man. My option got picked up. Um, I definitely promised my wife one more year. But, uh, you know, I love this game way too much to just kind of hang it up out of the blue. So uh, things go well. I stay healthy. Um, who knows? I'll, I'll, I'll keep going until they take it off me. What do you Five mean? more years, Kratz, at least. <laughs> Jan is a, Jan is a guy. Jan is a guy that is in epic shape, like another level of shape. Like, and I'm not talking round as a shape. He he takes he takes so much care of his body. Can Me you too. beat my 40 years? <laughs> Can I? Oh, uh, I'll be going into 37. So that's three more years, man. Uh, I don't know. My kids are getting older. Um, they're getting into sports. That's one of the things that kind of like um, makes me want to stay at home. But uh, I, know I don't want to make any breaking news and say, yeah, I'll try to beat it. Because then if I come up short, then, you know, I'll, you'll have that over me. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> that's fair. I mean, you talk about shape, man. So uh, Ratsy and I were in spring training together and talk about a guy that and honestly, and I'm being very honest with this, uh, gave me some. Like, it really inspired me because, yes, like, you are a few years older than me, but you would be in the weight room at 6 o'clock in the morning or maybe even earlier than that and just crushing squats. And, I mean, we walk in there, and I haven't – I could barely touch my toes yet, and, you know, we're, we're limping in, and then Kratzy's just sitting there just warming up at 225 and just dropping in. Everyone's like, what is this guy doing? Like, what? and you know, and – he was the only guy that would play catch with Francisco Mejia because no one could, no one loved the long <laughs> toss with Francisco Mejia. I mean, those are stuff that I remember. You were like, you know, the, you know, for lack of a better word, the, the saltier old dude, but you, you did, you were, you were awesome to be around. And um, that was one of the things I wanted to make sure I said when I came on. Uh -oh. it not you. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad you said that about the fact that I had long toss with Mejia. He would he would he would get so mad at me too. Francisco Mejia is probably the greatest long toss player I've ever played with in my life. Ever. And that spring training, you know, Trevor Bauer was out there doing his Trevor Bauer stuff, and Mejia mm -hmm. was just like, "Why? Why you go so far?" He's like, "Why you go so far?" And he's just like wrist flick, and it was like <laughs> off yeah. the batter's eye, like ridiculous long toss. Uh, yeah, and and Kipnis is over there throwing sixty feet and complaining about it. <laughs> yeah, Kipnis wasn't a heavy. Kipnis wasn't a heavy ball guy. Kipnis wasn't doing the. He wasn't doing the throw the ball backwards against the wall stuff. That the, the baseball was heavy enough. Yeah, the base. <laughs> he so drove more balls. In, he drove more runs in. Right, you're gonna say there something nice go. about me as a teammate. Do you want me to? <laughs> I, do I, okay, uh, let me come, try to come up with one. Uh, no, dude, Jason. And, and I kept thinking about this, like, what is something nice that I could say? So this is going to be me trying to say something nice. Play with Jason was truly like having, like, like you were a brother, like truly, like you couldn't live with or without him. Like literally he had to be there all the time and you loved him because his personality, you, know, you brought so much joy to the clubhouse, you know it. But then there were times that we would look at each other and just go, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> go away just go to second and every time we've talked we had a, a very close-knit group that um that ca all came up together talk about a time that was uh fun to, to celebrate with and i know jason was the probably the biggest part of it you know every odd year uh jason would step up um even though we made it a world series in 16 so <laughs> <laughs> i'll take that hey right? this is the nicest we have been to each other without being sarcastic but uh there was a good. I'm not even sure if I said something nice, but there was a okay. good. There was a good probably <laughs> two month period of probably 2016, maybe. If me and Lonnie Chisinau were in the same room, Jan immediately <laughs> left left the room. He's no, like, I walked can't in be, and be like, no. Yeah, I can't no, be in the not same these room. two. We no. would just be yeah. We're like the, those two old Muppets that would just sit on training tables. <laughs> and just, 
make fun of mm-hmm. everyone or just do whatever. But we, I, I'm with you on. I think that was that kind of period we had in Cleveland of having those same guys for that long was one of the more fun fun teams to be on for that many years. I got a question That's for cool. y'all. I got a question for both of you guys. We got. Now, I came in in spring training in seventeen. Don't remember. Yeah, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. The <laughs> two teams that got me a that gave me a contract minor league contract offer was the Cubs and the Cleveland Indians. I come into spring training after that, and I never brought it up. I am I am the biggest guy about calling people to the carpet. Anything. Did you guys see that as a successful season? Or a failed season? 2016. 16. Yeah. I'll let Jan take it first. All right. Um, one of the ways I look at it is the Diamondbacks. Do you consider that a successful season or a failure season? I mean, I feel like during the during that 16th season, um, the World Series kind of like shocked all of us. I mean, we got hot at the right time. And we started believing because we were just having to get over the the Tigers. We were just having to get over the uh, the Royals. They had just won the World Series. So to me, in 16, possibly one of the most surprising and most um, successful seasons I've been a part of. I'm, I'm going to echo that statement, I think. Uh, I saw a lot of what Jan said. I thought the Diamondbacks were very similar to what I was seeing a lot of us in 16 compared to their team. Uh, I'm even going to cross sports here. I thought Giannis was asked something about when they lost in the finals or something. He had a very good response to it. I think Scotty remembers this video. Mm-hmm. Um, only one team wins at the end. It, it, it doesn't mean you can't have a successful season. It doesn't mean it wasn't a success. The stuff that we got out of that year, the experience, the the everyone being better prepared for the following season, the success you have in the postseason, there's so many successful benefits and things experiences that you take away from a season like that you you can't help but label it a success was it did we win the world series no but to say it was a failure which is the opposite of success is is just not wouldn't be true yeah and Mm -hmm. and memories created obviously sure i mean winning is the goal for everyone it's the goal for fans but you got pretty damn far and a lot of people had incredible entertainment experiences watching you guys and following the emotions. So my question actually plays off that too for Kip and Jan. So now you both live in Chicago. How often do people come up to you? And I guess Jan, we can start with you because like you're on the team, right? So yeah. you're on the org that if they didn't beat you guys, it would still <laughs> be one of the top topics in all of sports. Well, uh, 2019 helped me get over it. I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> True. You know, I, I, I get to say it now. Uh, and to kind of a little bit of what we were just talking about the 16, uh, without the 16 World Series, that 19 World Series would have been a little bit more nerve wracking. I, I can promise you that. Um, but um, first day in uh, in spring training, we're walking into uh, the meeting room. It's like a big auditorium. And they have this massive 2016 Cubs and like they're, they talk about it like every other day in spring training. And uh, it, it kind of became a joke of, a, you know, let's get over it. Like, let's do this. Every other weekend in in, uh, in Chicago, they have Ben Zobris there, you know, to talk <laughs> about his his base hit. So, yeah. So, I mean, but again, the, the, the 19 uh, World Series definitely helped us out. Or at least helped me out. I don't know what it did for Kibnis. Yeah. Jan has the 2019 <laughs> World Series. I have... 2019 cabs and Pinot Noirs to help me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I got. So they do. But, and uh, so I played there the following or in 20. And when the whole, most of the roster was still there, when Rizzo and Brian and Javi and all of them were still there. And um, the best thing about it, especially the group that was there, they meet it head on. They, it's, that's the best way to avoid the awkwardness of it. Like we're, I'm stretching <laughs> in the morning uh, with Rizzo and he's like, Hey, look up there. Look at that banner. Do you remember that? And I was like, yeah, I fucking remember it. Thanks, buddy. But it's just like, <laughs> it, happens. it happens. It's not it's like, you can't change it. It happened. We lost. It's, it's just part of the game and uh, you move on. And there's, you, once the good thing about baseball players is there's always that next at bat, that next day, you're able to flip the page a little bit. So while me and Jan on that retrospect, especially I never won one. So it's like, I'll, you'll never fully get over it. 
mentally you can turn the page though and because you 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 get better at accepting things and looking to the next challenge to to win that one instead of dwelling on the past one mm -hmm. but to your point man um just to add on to that every time we go back to cleveland like i've gotten to play there a couple of times you still get people to say thank you man like what yeah. that meant to that organization at that time was a was a huge deal i mean it was a it was a big time i mean um that whole city still thanks us when we come back into town and we joked around about, you know, that reunion is going to be super awesome because of how close that group was. So, uh, yeah, that 16 World Series was almost a finished season with the best group of guys that I've, you know, that yeah. we've got to play with. Um, I still got I just went to a basketball game here in Chicago and I got stopped by three Clevelanders that just like, hey, man, I just want to say thank you. Uh, people don't realize like Cleveland was like the sports mecca for a good few years with the Cavs, with LeBron and ring ceremony over the world series, like going on at the same time, that was the place to be in the sports world. And uh, you're, you're having a fun transition. Cause I don't know if we have it pulled up yet, but we're talking about how close this group is. Cleveland group still has a, a group chat going on. We still have tons of texts that go on. <laughs> um, you, you can't just cause we don't play together anymore. You can't stop talking shit to each other. So one of the best group chats and one of the re most recent one was a highlight of Jan's from this past season <laughs> See, of a still photo of a game Drew Smiley was throwing. And I know we wanted to oh. cover this topic. Um, <laughs> I believe, are, are you upside? Are your feet above your head in midair or is it his feet? And there's some still photo where one flipped the other one to ruin a, a perfect game. And it wasn't ruined. The guy was going to be safe. I think it was just his swinging bunt where he rolled it out. There, there. it is. Oh, so, let's see. There we go. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the whole Cleveland group that has it, the me, Brantley, Tomlin, Kluber, Chiz, and all, uh, we, didn't, we didn't let this one go. So we, we have a still photo of that and immediately text it to Jan. So Jan, I'm sure, came back to the locker room with a text from all of us during that one. I mean, so yeah, I mean, there it is. There's, talk about you meeting it head on. This was me right after the game. Um, put a helmet on just to, like, it was hilarious because I put that helmet on and they're about to do the interview and all the reporters are like, I'm like, go ahead, man. Ask the question. I know what you guys are about to ask. <laughs> like it, it locked them up. So, uh, so then I just took over the, the interview. Um, what do you want me to say about that? I don't know how you want me to answer. This. <laughs> I do have a comment on that. It's a freak. Um, yeah, no. Well, 10 out of 10 times I, that play might still happen because I'm yelling. I got it. No one will ever see that. Um, and even uh, Smiley uh, said, I heard you saying I got it, but both of us, nine out of 10 times, he will not go out for that ball. But you know what? <laughs> just it happened. I mean, it's one athletes. of those things. That always hey. is a problem. Pitchers trying to be athletes. Not on my watch. Not it's on my watch. That is, that is so leader. true. That's why he's a leader. You can definitely. But hey, uh, on go ahead. On go that, ahead. no, on that. Um, I know you. Uh, AJ um, is on this as well, and we. Mm -hmm. I think it might have been like a month later. Um, I don't remember exactly where we were, and I mean, AJ and I don't have like. I mean, I know him because we played against each other quite a bit, um, but we don't know each other that well. And this is how much respect I have for him, and how much respect I have even more for him. Because if you can't make fun of me because of that play, then don't ever make fun of me. AJ didn't even say hi or anything; just went straight to it. Like, dude, no perfect game, huh? You want you didn't want him to have it, huh? <laughs> just straight to it, and I was like, you know what? I appreciate that because if you can't make fun of me, then don't try to make fun of me the any other time. <laughs> so AJ also I loves the that. Cubs. So you know, yeah. any <laughs> chance he gets to compliment He's the Cubs, oh, I'm sure he does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just going to say I was just going to say that like Jan, you could probably go through the annals of time and see all the plays that Jan has made on that ball and I would say that's mm. that's Jan's ball a lefty a lefty reaching down I don't care what pitcher it is there is not one athletic lefty that's picking that ball up and throwing it let alone yeah. a pitcher that's your play you're going to do that you're going to do that like spin no scope throw with your bazooka cannon that kip is wearing on his shirt you had I appreciate that appreciate that I, I'm, I'm if you can feel it i'm going over there and giving you a hug i've needed that yeah. i still get, they made t-shirts like the next day that uh, that company in 
company in Chicago made it the next day, and I was, I threw every single one of them away. Just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, I, I mean, I respect that you you brought the football helmet into the mix there because you know season gets long. I I, I think those little things are necessary. You know, a little more of that, a little more flavor, a little more character, you know, to kind of play up the moment for our sport. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, th- those are for sure things that I learned in Cleveland. Uh, that group, there wasn't anything that we let it slide. And then when I went into D.C., it was kind of the same thing, just a, an older group. And uh, I mean, why not, man? Uh, uh, media wants to take advantage sometimes of, uh, of capitalizing on a moment. And I decided to... Uh, you know, to trump them and get a, get ahead of it. Listen, this game knocks you down enough already with the your the successful you hear the three times out of a ten is the best. If you if you're getting beaten down by this game enough, and then you also have <laughs> teammates too that just will pile it on. If you can't learn to take a joke or to to smile at yourself or smile at some situations or at least make light of some stuff just to keep your head above the water, it's it's gonna make it that more more much more rough. And I I Jan knows this. I've struggle with it at times. I'm sure everyone struggles with it at times to just fully see the positive or to like, Hey man, nice line drive. Even though it was right at someone, you're like, I'm still over one. I don't care about the line drive. I'd rather have a swinging bun. It's like you got to be able to have a little humility and smile at yourself and find ways to distract yourself. If it's with humor, with anything, just because this game can really take its mental toll at times. Absolutely. Well, Jan, it was awesome catching up with you, dude. Good reminiscing. Um, congrats on the option. We'll uh, maybe Kratz and me will see you before Kip does in Chicago. I can't wait to see you next year. <laughs> We're gonna hang out so I'm, much. I'm I'm quite sure that I'll be talking to you guys before I talk to Kip again. <laughs> wait, Jan, I'm, are you wearing that watch that's on your wrist? Like watches or flexes? That watch you got on your wrist is that an iPad? That thing is ginormous. Uh, <laughs> Kratz, we're both getting old, man. Those things, these things, I can't really see them anymore. I gotta, <laughs> it, the lettering needs to get bigger. <laughs> no, man, like wait until, yeah. wait until you're, wait until you're done playing. Whenever that is, five years, two years, whatever it is, you're going to feel tremendous. And I played like a third of the games that you played. So you're going to be <laughs> tremendous, especially with all your on it, with all your on it supplements you're taking, you are fit and virile. <laughs> Oh no! It's all the NSF, right, Kip? If it's NFS, oh, it, NSF, it works. That, yeah. Exactly. That, that's that. That's that Pitchcom. That's Pitchcom, but twenty four seven. We're working that's on a new edition. Wife, wife and kids. Yeah. Hey, that's one hundred percent right. That's yeah. pick me up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Jan, great to talk dishes. to you, man. Enjoy the off season. Absolutely, guys. Thank you, guys. Hey, Kip, great to see you, man.